this is what we know about shepherds. In one verse found in Genesis, it kind of says it all. He, Pharaoh, will let you live here in the region of Goshen, for the Egyptians despise shepherds. Fact is, nobody likes shepherds. Sheep tending is one of those jobs that is very much needed, but no one really likes. They're equivalent to our septic tank cleaners, <laughs> our garbage collectors. No one likes them, but boy, what would we do without them? Even the Hebrews didn't like shepherds. They were a dirty lot and smelled of the sheep they tended. They worked long hours, had dirty feet. Did I mention that they smelled? Sheep, they're rather stupid animals. They wander and get lost and fall prey to bears and lions. Did I mention they smelled? Another downside to being a shepherd was the long hours of being alone. We know that David, a shepherd king, passed the hours by creating poems and songs and practicing with his sling. Now here's a thought. In David, God made a shepherd a king. In Jesus... He made a king into a sacrificial lamb. God turned the world upside down in many differing ways. This was one of them. Another, he chose Bethlehem, not Rome or Athens or even Jerusalem. He chose Israel, a small nothing country who had nearly forgotten its own birthright. God chose peasants and not royalty. You know, God seems to be in the business of doing things differently. So when the birth came on, came on that night of nights, God again chose the outlandish over the predictable. The story tells us that kings did visit the newborn and brought gifts and that angels sang. But the first humans to witness the event were the lowliest of the low, the least educated men, ranch hands, who were despised by the rest of humanity, men who by their own very nature were workers and laborers, whose clothes stank, and they had sweat on their brow, and dirt under their fingernails. Men who lacked basic manners and were, of course, in their language, they were at the bottom of the economic food ladder. Nowhere are their names recorded in the Bible, and yet their names were on the list to see the King of Kings First, God invited simple men to see and worship and to celebrate. I like to think that Jesus liked the idea of the shepherds being the first to have audience with him. Throughout his ministry, he went to the outcast of Israel. He ate with the sinners. He touched the untouchable with his fingers and with his love. He talked about the greatness of being a servant to all. He said, when you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. 
Jesus, the child of the nativity, was also the man who called his own disciples into account for dismissing the children. Jesus said, don't hinder them. And God said the same thing to the shepherds that night. Don't hinder them. Can you imagine the wonder that took place as they were confronted by the heavenly host? These humble field hands. The Bible says that they were sore afraid. I know if I were one of them, I would be wondering a couple of things. Why were the angels here? Why did they come to us? Why? 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 Sometimes being simple has its place in life. The shepherds weren't confounded by the complexities of life. Each day was pretty much the same as every other day in their simple lives. They acted the same way that they had been taught by their shepherd fathers and their fathers before them. We have a tendency of making life harder than it needs to be for ourselves. In our quest for the good life, we get caught up in keeping up. We spend too much time seeking and not enough time simply being. After all, we are human beings, not human doings. All of this makes for a crazy, fast-paced world that grabs onto us and takes us for a ride. Perhaps the lesson that we need this Advent season is to come back to the simplicity of life. To learn once again what's really important. To capture what we might have lost along the way. The shepherds were simple men who followed instructions. They visited a baby in Bethlehem and took part in the greatest story that was ever told. Then they left and they told everybody that they ran into what had happened to them. Their lives were never the same again. They had learned that as they were watching their flocks by night, that somebody is watching over them. And the memory of that night would remain with them for the rest of their lives. They would never forget the words, glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, and goodwill toward all. And the same memory can be yours as well during this season of Lent. You see, God made finding, finding the Christ simple, both for the shepherds and for you and me. Praise be to God. Amen.